And here we go. Welcome to the Super Wheeler Bros Podcast. I'm Jake Wheeler. And I'm Mike Wheeler. And that was and Murphy. That was Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? I this hope, is uh, I hope they heard that. So. <laughs> There's a dog barking. That was Murphy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> welcome to episode number 83. <laughs> I'm still just laughing how perfect he did that. Yeah. Uh, Mike Wheeler. <laughs> I'll leave you out. Don't worry. Uh, what episode is this? 83. Damn. 83, closing in on 100. Mm-hmm. All right. We're going to Spe- do something special for 100. Not like we did for two years, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, we probably won't. <laughs> I don't know. 100's a big number. We but, say we will, and then But we what don't. is there special to really do? You know? I don't know. I don't know. Something else that's special. We'll have to come up with some special top 100 countdown. <laughs> we could do, do that, but what the fuck would we even try to talk about? I don't know. Uh, we are closing in on 500 subscribers. 493. All right. So that's always good. And we, again, appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening. I don't know what in God's green earth we do to make you actually want to listen to us, but hey, I'll take it. So, speaking of some shit that I wanted to discuss today, um, I know you don't like talking about game stuff, so I'm not going to talk about much, but I just thought that this was maybe interesting. Okay. Okay. So, in Call of Duty Black Ops 3, there is apparently going to be a new difficulty. It's called Realistic Difficulty. We know this because of the uh, achievement list was released. Hmm. And the realistic difficulty, I guess, is above veteran. So, so is it like it is in real life, where if you get hit with one bullet, you're pretty much dead? Probably. Depending on where it is. And you're going to have no HUD. You're not going to be able to tell what your ammo is. It's going to be like that double tap mode hmm. on uh, Exo Zombies that you didn't play. <laughs> Excuse me, but I showed you just a, a bit of it. Um, there is also, uh, it is announced that... Dead Ops, if you remember uh, Dead Ops from uh, Black Ops for Zombies, the little arcade game, mm-hmm. there's going to be a Dead Ops 2. Oh. Yeah, Dead Ops Arcade. So that's pretty freaking cool, man. So that's really, I mean, that's really all I was really wanting to mention. Um, but the... Uh, Realistic difficulty is yeah. interesting, but I'm never going to play it. No, I, I probably will, because that's, I mean... I don't even go on normal. I, don't I just a, go on veteran. I play video games just to play them. I don't play them for realistic. Yeah, yeah, but I think that's for me. It's part of the challenge and it's fun. Well, so, different. yeah, enjoy. Absolutely. People like you. <laughs> Absolutely. I think the reason they're doing this realistic difficulty is because you actually have co-op. That would make sense to try and make it a little harder if you have co-op. They're just doing it for be different. Maybe. But Dead Ops Arcade. Got to keep it fresh. That's cool. Well, I mean, it's Call of Duty. They're not. They're not making it that fresh. That's that's why they're throwing everything they can out there. Let's make it more realistic. Let's, Let's make, make it yeah. fresh. Let's take it from you know, jetpacks that'll shoot you across the maps, you know, nonstop and all kinds of ridiculous move it to as realistic as possible on the next one. Except for the fact that they do have a booster where you can run along a wall. So. Yep. Realistic. It's a little bit better than the jetpacks. I played the uh, Black Ops Three beta a little bit, and it was it was pretty fun. When you run on the wall, though, is that easier to shoot them or is it harder to shoot them? Um, well, I, ma- I would imagine it would make it harder. It's a lot harder because you have to continue to run along the wall, and you're trying to like hip fire because you can't. No, I'm not aim. talking about you. I'm talking about when people are doing it. Oh, that makes it way easier for somebody to shoot you. Really? Yeah, because you can't shoot them back, really. Yeah, but I mean, like, I feel like hitting a... I feel like you'd have to be moving really fast to run along the wall, so... 
like hitting them would be kind of hard. Kind of like I, hitting them as they're flying across the way in uh, the last one was hard. Yeah, but the difference is in the last one you have a boost that makes you go really fast. On this one, it's more like you got gravity boots. Oh, I see so, what you're saying. Yeah. So there's no point in doing it. Uh no it it gets you around the map in certain ways where people can't see you if if you're smart. Um, but you know I only got to play like five or six games, so I didn't really get too far into it. Right. But okay, I think it's pretty fun. So I I just wanted to talk about Dead Ops Two and say that I'm glad they're bringing that back. Because Dead Ops 2 is probably going to be a lot of fun uh, because that mode is super awesome. The uh, Dead Ops Arcade and Black Ops 1. Yeah. So, uh, the only other thing I had to talk about before something a little bit more serious, which uh, we can get into later, is Will Smith apparently uh, talking about uh, Jared Leto in Suicide Squad and potentially Bad Boys 3. Um, he said regarding Jared Leto, I've never actually met Jared Leto. We worked together for six months and we've never exchanged a word outside of action and cut. I literally have not met him yet. So the first time I see him will be, Hey, Jared, what's up? He was all in on the Joker. So what he's trying to say is that he was so much into the role of the Joker that he never actually got to meet Jared Leto himself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Which is pretty funny. <laughs> mm. I mean, but that's that's kind of what method actors are like, though. Yeah, I mean, if that's if he was really like that, I can't imagine how crazy that would be and just running around acting like that the whole time, though. Wouldn't they get annoying? Probably. It'd be fucking annoying. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be really annoying. It'd be annoying to me. Yeah, I mean, it'd be kind of funny, but uh, in the end, it's like, for the love of God, dude, stop. Uh, also, apparently, uh, Bad Boys 3 that was supposed to not include Will Smith, it may yet. Uh, there is a very, very strong possibility that you will be seeing a Bad Boys within the next 12 to 16 months. He doesn't necessarily say he's in it, though. Doesn't say he's in it, doesn't say he's not. Right. I really think that they shouldn't make one if it's not the two of them. It's kind of pointless. So. Wait, what? What you reading about Jazzy Jeff and him doing a music fans? It'd be a summer world tour with DJ Jazzy Jeff. Yeah, is apparently, he apparently he's doing a summer world tour with DJ right, Jazzy so Jeff. Making new music for it, or well, he finally released a new song lately. It wasn't I don't even a new song. It was a remix of something. Yeah, it was like a remix of something. He like he did like one verse or something. Mm. Well, then he didn't release a song, and he said shit. Oh, I thought he wasn't allowed to do that. He said shit. I think it was shit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was shit. You know, it's kind of, and everybody was making a huge deal on it. He's like, oh my god, he cursed. And people are like, he's cursed before. He said bitch or something like that on one song way back. What's uh, what's Eminem going to say about that? I don't know. <laughs> he said shit. He said shit. He said shit. But that's just weird that he didn't curse in his records because he cursed, he in, cursed movies. in movies a lot, especially in Bad Boys. Yeah. He doesn't feel the need to curse when he's rapping, man. I guess so. When he's laying down his flow, he's just no curse words up in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. He wants to be something that younger people can listen to, I guess. No, that's fair. And they can. I did. <laughs> then again, I was listening to Eminem and <laughs> everybody else, too. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, see, you know, I mean... I guess... Come out. How old was I? 1996. So you weren't very old. 96. That's when Eminem's first album came. Or 99. Sorry. I, mean, I was gonna say. I don't think it was 96. Uh, Infinite came out in 96. His like underground. Okay. Record. So Will Smith, when he when he had like Big Willie style and stuff, that was before that, right? No, it was right around then. It was around because the you had Willennium and Big Willy Willie style. Well, I know and... Willennium was like 1999. So Big Willie style was like a couple years before that. Yeah, part, right? a couple. So I was listening to like Big Willie style back in elementary school. Mm-hmm. So I was a little younger still. I don't. I probably I listen to other shit though too. DMX shit like that. Uh, yep. I was Even shit back in the day, man. I was ninety eight. What is it? What was it called? It's dark and hell is hot. Yeah, and then flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. It's dark. Uh, it was hot. Uh huh. <laughs> uh. All right. Ah uh, uh, shit, blood. I do not. See if anybody uh, 
outside of this uh, state recognizes this. What? Skyline Chili. Apparently, there's one up north now. It was only a Cincinnati thing, but there is oh, one there up north some, in uh, like Columbus they're, they're area. To stretch out a little bit, anyway. That's good. Yeah. That's good. They need to get it's worldwide. It's good stuff, man. It's delicious. It's good stuff. I don't know, people outside. So, people outside. They're saying chili. Really like it. They don't think it's chili, but it's not. It's, it's not chili. It's it's a hot dog topping. No, yeah, pretty much. It's hot dog and spaghetti topping. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah. That's not chili. You need the cheese to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just eat... I would never just eat a bowl of that. No. It's fucking... It's It's a definitely a hot dog and spaghetti topping because we just had chili. I've hearty had chili. regular chili on top of a hot dog before and that stuff goes better on top of a hot dog. Mm-hmm. Skyline, Gold Star. Chili slop, basically. Yeah, it's it's like chocolate it's chili slop. slop with cheese, and you can put mustard and onions on it too if you want, which I don't. Yeah, you know I love onions on certain things, but not on cheese cones. I can eat onions on it. I just don't prefer not to. Yeah, yeah I don't mm-hmm. eat them on there. Yeah, mustard. I can. I mean, the mustard is not necessary, but I mean that can be on there too. It really doesn't even mess with the flavor that much, honestly. Yeah, for on sure. On the few that I've eaten that did have it on there, anyway. <laughs> Gotta love it. So, I thought, uh, given the uh, tragedy that happened in our country over the uh, past week, we could at least mention it, especially because uh, I want. I mean, I I want to talk about this the father of the shooter, who I feel is. He's either got to be in full deniability or he's just nuts. So, okay. um, but anyway, uh, in Oregon, of course, uh, at what was it? Uh, Umqua Community College in Oregon. Um, the shooter basically went around and murdered, I think it was nine people. I don't remember what the number Hurt was. seven more. I, I can't remember the numbers, but. He blames both guns and not guns for what took place on October yeah. 1st. So this this dude, I think he was 26. He apparently had been putting on social media websites that he had planned on doing something like this. And people were actually encouraging it and telling him how to get away with it, which is an indictment of our society in and of itself. Um, but he got a hold of 13 guns. Six were recovered at the scene. He was executing uh, people who said they believed in God. They basically said they were Christians. Mm-hmm. And so, obviously, this man was deranged. I'm not even going to say his name because that's exactly what he wanted. He wanted to be recognized and known. So, not going to say his name. However, the man's father basically said that if he had not been able to get a hold of 13 guns, that this would have never happened. Sure. That's what guns are. They're killers. It's as simple as that. It's black and white. Guns are the killers, not his son. I understand maybe you want to defend your child that apparently you had no idea was insane. Okay, so he said his his son is not the killer. Yeah, the guns are the killers. The killer. Well, I mean... And this is prompting Obama and all these people to, especially celebrities, to come out and say that we shouldn't have guns. Yeah. This should take away our Second Amendment right. Well, you know what? The problem with that is, is that there's still going to be illegal guns in the world. There will be illegal guns. People will be able to get guns. And people will still kill people. mm -hmm. So, I feel like if we were... See, that's what bothers me. I feel like if everybody was armed, this shit wouldn't happen. Well, I mean, if you could if you could take away guns from every single person, the problem is, and it's like a military, you know, police state. All, you know, only people in authority have them, right? Which is a bad thing, you know. Can be a bad thing anyway. Can be. Plus, you're never going to get rid of them illegally. So, sure, if nobody had a gun, citizens anyway, they couldn't go out and do mass shootings. Would they? I mean, they could go out and just watch, start stabbing people. I mean, you can take somebody out when they're doing that easier. I understand yeah. that. Yeah, but the yeah problem is, is 
they're going to be able to get a hold of guns anyway. So. I think as long as there's human beings on this planet, you're never going to be able to control it. Whether yeah, you but to say your son's not a killer. No, your son is a killer. Your son took something that, you know, without him pointing at people and pulling the trigger, it's not going to hurt anyone. You know? Correct. So, Guns don't go off by them fucking yeah. selves. Not usually, anyway. <laughs> I'm sure there's been a rare occurrence here or there, but if you don't keep them loaded and shit, a person has to build the gun... Put the bullets in the gun, you know, point it at someone and pull the trigger to hurt someone. Yeah. I mean... It, so, it's a person, this operator is what it is. Yeah. I, it, this kind of stuff, I mean, I I just got one thing to say to everyone across the entire world. I know that this message isn't going to get out to everyone, but I want to say this. Stop fucking shooting people. Period. There are other ways to solve your issues. If this guy was so upset because he wasn't recognized, go out and get recognized. Go do go do something stupid on the internet. Like uh, what's her face did. Go do something stupid. What's, you can, what's her face? You know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, stop. I want you to bring her up for like the fifth week in a row. <laughs> stop. That's my point. But my point yeah, is, yeah. you can do something stupid and just get recognized. Say something controversial if you want to be recognized. If you're upset, fucking fix your lot in life, okay? I get so tired of this shit. And for people who are getting shot by police officers, do what the police officer tells you. He's probably not going to shoot you. We've talked about that about a thousand times. You know, there's so many ways to not get shot. Yeah. And there's so many ways to not shoot people. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It, I just, it's just baffling to me. You know? I mean, the thing about it is, is it's been part of our country since the dawn of our country. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, in our, you know, it's in the Bill of Rights. What I don't understand the most... It's, you know, we... What? I just said, what I don't understand the most is most of these guys are such big pussies. They get themselves killed or they kill themselves. They can't face the music of what they did. They're not really proud of what they did. They just wanted to well, no, have a name. Su- they're suicidal. They wanted to have a legacy. To, people who do this shit are obviously unhinged because a normal person could not just go and shoot a bunch of people and just be like... Mm-hmm. That they don't even know. That they have no motive to shoot. Yeah. I couldn't fathom going up and doing that for any reason. I mean... Well, <laughs> Clearly. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I could fathom it for, like, revenge or something, but just shooting a bunch of random people you don't know. Yeah. No. No. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Yes. Guns just help make it easier to do. Guns make it easier to do, yes. But, I mean, it's just, you're not, I mean, there's so many people out there who handle them responsibly. I mean, mm-hmm. you're going to take them away from them. I mean... I don't really understand, like, love of guns like some people do. Like, oh, I love my guns. Like, ah, oh, you know, like, I would have one for protection mm-hmm. and anything else, you know, and learn how to shoot it, obviously. I mean, if you're going to have one, you should learn how to use it if you, in case you ever have to use it, you know. Yeah. But uh, Always cracks me up that Bill Burr story where he's talking about shooting the Magnum. Yeah. <laughs> the killer comes in his oh, house yeah. while he's sleeping. <laughs> Most people aren't marksmen, so they're going to shoot at... Ooh. Yeah, you're going to shoot... <laughs> just immediately, as soon as you shoot at someone with a magnum and you don't have earplugs in, it's just... Boom, boom. <laughs> He's right, though. I mean, you're immediately just not going to be able to hear anything. You ever shot a gun without earplugs in? Uh, no. It hurts. No. I can imagine. Yeah. I it's imagine. it's It hurts, for sure. So. so that's why the best thing for like home security to get is just like a tiny little gun, you know? Yeah. It'll Absolutely. still stop the person, but you're not going to like, you know, you can shoot at them a couple times and not go deaf. Yeah. I mean, seriously though, squeezing off a couple of 22 rounds is not a big deal. Like, you know, yeah. it's still going to fucking kill them. Yeah. You might have to like, you know, point blank shoot them in the face, but <laughs> it's going to hurt. Well, it doesn't matter. You can at least take them down, which is the idea anyway. Yeah. I mean, because if you do that, you're not going to have to explain anything to the cops, really. So like, oh, this person broke into my house. I have this gun. I have this license for it. Here it is. 
I warned them to stop. They came at me. I shot them. They're not dead. They're sitting here bleeding on my floor. Here you go. Arrest them. Take them to the hospital. You're welcome, officer. I like how my government teacher actually told me how to get away with killing someone in your house. Yeah, I, I shoot them and shoot in the air. Did I, you have the same person? We're not going to name yeah. names, but... Probably. <laughs> Mr. Smith? I said we're not going to name names, and you just named it. <laughs> Mr. Smith is a generic name. Yes. Didn't even say the school it's at. It really doesn't matter. Well, that's true. Was that who it was? Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. pretty sure... But you know what's awesome about that is there's about a bajillion people guy. named Smith. So... It doesn't matter. He was just like, I mean, it, it's he's not the only, he's not the person to come up with that. No. So it's just, I mean, it's like a joke. He also was the one that the teacher said he wants to like karate kick the student. So I think he liked to say shit for, to be funny. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. He reminds me of Bill Burr a little bit in stature. Yeah. He re- Bill Burr is a little taller than him. Yeah. You know what's really bad? Like. People that embellish, like I was just telling you, remember you were at the store the other day and I was telling you about uh, that guy with his Brooklyn accent and how he's talking about how recently he got mugged. Yeah. And I threw a 17-year-old kid, it was a 17-year-old kid, and I threw him over my shoulder. And my back's been hurting ever since. And the cop? He doesn't look like he threw anyone over his shoulder. No. I mean, he competed in the Kumite like Frank Dukes. Oh, he, uh, you know, he took a bayonet in the belly in Vietnam. Oh. Um, he shot for Playboy. Is that quite a life? Yeah, he's got like almost a million dollars in the bank, right? But he works at H H Gregg, right? He's like he's like fucking Forrest Gump. That does not compete with me. I mean, he he loves a woman that doesn't love him and just takes advantage of him. He's Forrest Gump. No, he's not Forrest Gump. No, you're right. He's not as cool as Forrest Gump. Gen A. Forrest Gump never made shit up. No, he didn't. <laughs> he drank fourteen, fifteen Dr. Peppers. Yeah, he was everything he said was completely serious. Everyone just thought he was full of shit. Yeah. Maybe that's maybe he is Forrest Gump. Maybe he's, he's done all this shit. <laughs> maybe he is. <laughs> <laughs> if you're the so, one saying he's Forrest Gump, then if that's true, then he's actually done all this shit he says he's done. Yeah. And he has all so. this money and works at HH Gray. <laughs> I'm sorry we moved off of the Oregon shooting. I really think we've said all we needed to say about guns yeah, and the Oregon did. We shooting. We went on a tangent off of that. Yes. Um, I mean, no, yeah, it's a horrible thing. And shooting, the problem is, is there's always going to be crazy people. Even if you did get rid of all the guns, there'd be people running out there like fucking, ka, 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 like stabbing random people. Like, all right, let's get rid of all the knives. Can't yeah. have knives anymore. <laughs> forks. Yeah. Next will be forks. Yeah, forks. Can't pens. stab people with forks. Yep. Can't have pens or pencils anymore. Can't have any anymore. kind of sharp object whatsoever. Yep. Can't have like no nail know, clippers. No chainsaws or anything. I oh mean, yeah, can't have chainsaws. You need you have people running around with chainsaws you now. Know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre happened. You know, can't we should get rid of those too. Yeah. You know. Yep. You know. What about thumbs? People can like gouge out your eyes with thumbs. Like yeah, you have to cut everybody's out, thumbs yes, off. You have to, cover you have to go digitless. Off. Um. Yeah, because that way they wouldn't be able to hold anything. I was gonna say you can't have like um. Uh, what is uh? Like an ice pick. Yeah, not an ice pick. Well, you can't have ice picks either, but I mean, I was literally going to say uh, ice, you know? Oh, you can't have ice. Oh, yeah, because yeah, like, what, what, like Bruce Willis stabbed that dude in the yeah. face. So we have to, like, you know, figure out how to control weather and not let it get cold God, enough what, for ice. To I form. mean, John McClane would not be able to escape situations. No. He'd be dead. Well, nobody would. These situations wouldn't exist, though. Well, there'd be still be able to be hand to hand. Again, those guys in the second one were military, though. So, what if something like that happens, and then John McClane comes along, and he has no weapons anymore? He has no ice picks. He has no ice. He has I'm no. Pretty sure the military guy's gonna whoop his yeah, ass. Yeah, military guy's gonna kill him because he, they have guns, and he has nothing. That's why we have to keep guns. Well, and he's everything a cop. Around. He's a cop, though. Oh, wait, he has a gun, but he has like a handgun. So yeah, he doesn't have a machine yeah. gun. Well, he didn't have a machine gun in that until he took it off of him. Okay, so all right, so maybe John. McClane and then he was shooting that. fucking blanks. Damn, dude, we just we just poked holes in our poked own holes argument. In our argument. <laughs> but you know what? If John McClane was uh, you know off duty, maybe he wouldn't be able to keep his gun on him. Ah, you can uh, only have your gun when you're on duty. Yeah, exactly. I would always be so on duty. The military is always on duty. I mean, they're you know they're the military. I mean, yeah. They can be called to action at any time. I tell you Cops, what. Cops, if they're going on vacation, they're not really on duty. They don't even have jurisdiction. Give me that jurish my dick. So that's why crap. we need to keep guns and everything around. So if something like Die Hard happens, you know, people like John McClane can save the day. Right. We otherwise, need a, we need an ordinary guys, man to take care of business. Other guy, otherwise, the bad guys are just going to... They're going to win. And what if zombies happen? And we don't we'd have be guns. fucked. Yeah, we'd be fucked. Come on, people. Yeah, what the fuck? What if that actually happens? You fucking actors. You're dead. Why, why are the actors getting all upset about guns? They know zombies are coming. They've played in all the movies and shows. 
they know that you need guns to survive a zombie apocalypse. And, and damn it, you do. Sons of bitches. Mm-hmm. So did you see that uh, Michael Bennett for the Seattle Seahawks, God, he said something weird. I can't remember what he said. Hang on just a second. Well, Martellus Bennett for the Chicago Bears compared Jay Cutler to Jesus. Said people throw stone, threw stones at Jesus. But, uh, yeah. But Jay Cutler is never going to rise after his death. No, and Jay Cutler. died a long time ago in the NFL. Jay Cutler sucks. Yeah, so I don't understand that. So, let me see here. There's no comparison. <laughs> no, there's not. Sorry, give me. It's just because he just sucks is the only, thing I'm, only reason I'm saying that. Oh, this, is, this is what he said right here. This motherfucker, I, I, he's such a fucking oddball. He said that he holds JFK's assassination against Matt Stafford because Matt Stafford's from Texas and they killed JFK. He's from Dallas. They killed President John F. Kennedy. I hold that against him. Okay. Michael Bennett was not born when John F. Kennedy was president, number one. And number two, what? Yeah, that's... What? Dude, there's, there's no even reason to even say any of that shit. It's just what? what? <laughs> okay. What are you talking about? He assassinated JFK with his arm. <laughs> From his dad's sperm sack. Yeah. Because I don't think Matthew Stafford was alive either. Speaking of which, <laughs> no, he wasn't. <laughs> and just because he's from Texas doesn't mean it's his fault. What the fuck is up with the Seahawks getting every lucky call in the history of the NFL? I don't know. Did you see that game last night? I was watching some of it. So, at the end of the game, Calvin Johnson's going in, which, by the way, Cam Chancellor, what a play to oh, yeah. save that game. Yeah. But he's going into the end zone. Cam Chancellor knocks it out. And then the linebacker just pops it out of the end zone. That's a fucking penalty. Yeah, I thought so. When he did that, I was like, eh. You can't do that. That's an illegal uh, pat of the ball or yeah. illegal touch of the ball. It's a really weird rule, but that should have been first down on the one-yard line for Detroit. Hmm. <laughs> that was a great play by Cam Chancellor. Though. Oh, no doubt. He is their defense. And everyone says Richard Sherman and everything. But no, like, Cam Chancellor's are defense. Did you see him ha- pop Calvin Johnson earlier in the game? Oh, yeah. You notice what Ooh. happened when Richard Sherman couldn't cover Calvin Johnson. Well. He got him a couple times. Kerry Williams covered him That's, mostly. Well, when Richard Sherman was on him, he was getting catches, from what I noticed anyway. Anyway, you notice what happened when Cam Chancellor wasn't playing the beginning of the season? Yeah, they got they their losing. own, too. Yeah. So, he is their defense. Till they play the fucking Bengals this week, baby. Right. Bitch. We have so many weapons. I don't be able to cover them all. And our defense is good. You know, you Russell cover, Wilson. Go ahead and cover AJ Green, Marvin Jones, Muhammad Sanu, Tyler Eifert, and even, both our like, running backs. Even Geo out of the back, back of the field. And then we'll just put. Uh, we put have a, Brandon Tate as our fifth receiver. Say we can put Brandon Tate in there, and he'll make an outstanding play. <laughs> then we'll put a different running back in there. And Andy Dalton. And Andy Dalton. Can Allow me to say one thing real quick about Andy Dalton. I will sing his praises so far this this year. The man has taken a huge leap forward. He has doubled his accuracy on balls 20 yards down the field. Yeah, he has. So, good for you, Andy Dalton. And we've always said that Andy Dalton was kind of a bum, and he was, when it comes to the playoffs. Well, see, here's the thing. I believe the first person to... Well, here's the thing. I'm not... One, I want to see what he does this next weekend versus the Seahawks. That would be a big test. That would be a big test. Mm-hmm. If he does well then, okay, that's a start. And then I want to see what he does that first primetime game. I don't care who it's against, just because he's he's. I cannot remember a good game he's ever had in primetime. I think uh, after we said that he's never won a primetime game, somebody came back and said that he they beat the Eagles on Monday night. Yeah, and I don't think he had a very good game though. That's what I'm saying. No, I don't, I don't think, think so. he's ever had a good game in a primetime game. Right, but Playoffs I think I think otherwise. he can do it because I've seen a lot okay, this year. Well, that's fine. I I you know what? He's definitely looked better to me. But I want to see it in those two games. And also, um, I mean, I mean, I do think he's, he has looked better, though. He's not Rodgers. He's not Manning. What he's I've not Brady. What I've always said about but... him, though, is that Andy Dalton would be fine as long as he makes good decisions. And yes. I feel like that's when, when he came, first came in the league, like that first year, he I feel like he made... He game managed. I feel like, yeah, his first year was his best year so far at making good decisions. 
He had a very good second year. It was year. his best complete year. His first year was his best complete year so far, making decisions and everything. I feel like since then, he got worse and worse and worse with making decisions. Where last year, he made so many stupid decisions Well, he all had year. 19 touchdowns and 18 interceptions yeah, he, or something like that. Yeah, he was really bad. Yeah. But this year, so far, he has he's made one bad... It wasn't even a bad decision. It was just a bad throw. It was a bad throw. Because It was a good decision. Yeah, if you would have thrown it to the back corner, it would have either been A.J. Green... Catch or incomplete. Catch, yeah, or incomplete. Yeah. And he fumbled possible. the ball the other day yeah, against Baltimore. I mean, but you know what? Happens. To give him credit, he also came right back and boom, boom, scored touchdowns. Yeah. So I mean, he's he hasn't even he hasn't really made very many bad decisions. No. I mean, he's been good about that. So if he stays with that, he'll be fine. Yep, absolutely. And yeah, if he just has confidence, letting those balls throw, and it, it's clear you know what? Does. Well, obviously, you know what? You know what? The confidence. the thing that that showed me that he's different this year a little bit. Is when he ran for that first down and he's just like, first down. And he looked like Beaker and the Muppets. It doesn't matter. I don't give a shit. When he purses his lips like that, when we went like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, you need to not do that. Just keep normal. Then you won't look like Beaker. It was still awesome though. He's got I was the red like, hair and he looks like Beaker. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> That's pretty fucking funny. I like that. Front <laughs> down. <laughs> But no, uh, no, I'm, I'm just messing. But still, I mean that that led really me good. to believe that uh, he believes in himself. It doesn't hurt that Tyler Eifert and Marvin it Jones hurt are back. He has all of these people back. I mean, yeah, and AJ's healthy. Yeah, and Sanu's been able to slide to just. Uh, yeah, he's just a third receiver now. Yeah, back to where he belongs. Um, and then look at both the their fa- running backs are going full speed. Right. Jeremy well, Hill and Jeremy Hill hasn't even had a good game yeah, he yet. Hasn't even had a good game yet. He's just good short yardage back, but Geo seems to be the one's been able to break free a little bit. Well, and he the, hasn't even done the problem is either. Geo's better in pass protection, mm-hmm. and they're throwing the ball more. Yeah. So uh-huh. because Andy Dalton has been that much more impressive. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll see. What here's here's what I'll say. I worry about his performance this Sunday versus Seattle because their defense is legit. Oh yeah. But they're coming to. Our house. Yeah. We're not going to Seattle. To their bullshit 12th man place. Yeah. I hate Seattle's fans more than the team, I think. Yeah. Because I don't know the, about I, that. I don't understand why well, I don't like a lot of people on the team, but I like some people on the team. Like Russell Wilson. That but, dude. Oh, he's ridiculous, we'll talk about man. this in a second. That one play, I'm sorry, I have to cut away from it. That one play, was it like towards the end of the half or something, where he's just standing, like, he literally was in the back of backfield for like 12 seconds. He juked around a bunch of people. He's back like 30 yards behind the line, and he's literally doing like a street fighter stance, just sitting there like this, like waiting, waiting, waiting. Then he jukes somebody else and runs and around. And threw it across his body. And then threw it, yeah. and it was almost. It was barely not complete. Mm-hmm. But he was back there for like 12 seconds. Just Dude, he got sacked like seven times, and still... Like, he was running for his life. The, Detroit was crushing the, the offensive uh, line. The plays he made were ridiculous. And that's why Clay Matthews kissed his uh, bicep and said, you ain't you ain't Russell Wilson, bro, to Colin Kaepernick. Oh, yeah. Colin Kaepernick's definitely not. Well, no, because Colin Kaepernick is really fast, straight ahead. Yeah. Colin Kaepernick cannot juke people like Russell Wilson. No. There's nobody in the NFL that does what Russell Wilson does. I mean, Colin Kaepernick has a fucking arm, but... He's not as, as accurate as Russell Wilson, even. Well, Russell Wilson's not accurate in the pocket, though. Really? If you can keep him yeah. contained in the pocket, I almost hope the Bengals don't have a pass rush. Yeah. <laughs> or they just have like a. Or they can actually wrap him up. Yeah, just keep him well, and just keep him contained. You know, that's that's the biggest thing with him is containment. He's Rather gonna than make trying plays. to drive up the field and get around them, don't even do that. Just keep everybody in. He's gonna make plays, well, but the Bengals' doesn't. defense, I feel, is better than Detroit's defense. Yeah. And so, our offense is way better than their offense. Obviously, yeah, because Matthew Stafford has nobody but Calvin Johnson. He's got Calvin Johnson, that's it. Yep. And Golden Tate. But Golden Tate, really, is he, he going to do anything on Richard Sherman? Or He's not, like, elite. I mean... Richard Sherman is way bigger than Golden Tate. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. So, but yeah, it, I'm very confident in our Bengals. I think they're... This is the year they may have a chance. I think that... I can't remember who said it on the radio, but somebody said... If Vontaze Burfitt came back when he's allowed to come back and is like healthy enough to stay on the field and play, that could be the difference between them winning a Super Bowl and not. It could be. Because he's that good. The thing is, do His I... The problem is he's never been able to stay healthy. So Right. I think they're better than Denver. I don't think they're better than New England, though. So they got Burfitt in the middle of that. They could be. If, they, if he's making plays, because he was good on the pass and the run, so... 
Yeah, because well, because Malaluga is really good in the run, but not so good in the pass. We don't have. I don't think. I feel like our pass defense has been terrible this year. It's not been the greatest, but but we don't give up touchdowns. Cornerbacks, cornerbacks have been okay. Well, Denard came in and played really well for Pac Man. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, Pac Man's our best player in the secondary, and I well, we missed Iloka big time last week. Yeah, we did. He's awesome too. Him and Pac Man are the best in the secondary. And then if Burfitt came back, and we had him and Maluga and AJ Benny Hawk. Ray. Well, AJ Hawk Burf. didn't even play this week. Yeah, he did. I didn't see him. He was in there on like one play at least. Oh, so okay. So he must have got hurt and come out. Maybe I don't know. So I didn't see him. I know I saw him. I saw him, and he was in there for like a combined tackle. At right. Because I anyway, saw Lemire. But if we had Lemire, Benny, Benny Ray, Ray Maluga, Burfick, and AJ Hawk, that'd be a pretty solid group. Of well, that would backers. mean you have a lot of depth, like you well, have on the defensive yeah, line. Yeah, that too. And by the way, Geno Atkins. He's back. Yeah, and Michael Johnson's look. And he's back. Pretty damn good since he came back. And Carlos, Carlos is the best lap. pass rusher we have. Yeah. So, so they're not bad. They Peck get a chance. Always, always been solid stopping the run. I feel like so. Yeah. I always like having him in there plug and plug up the fucking middle. What's that? Uh, Pecco. Pecco. Yeah. The run more so than the pass. He had two sacks yeah, last week. Yeah, he did. One of them was when he was uh, the quarterback was scrambling. And he caught him before he went to, got to the line. But yeah. Still. Still counted. So. It's it's good that we have something to at least be excited about because the Reds just the Reds finished with, uh, I believe, the worst record in Major League Baseball. Probably. And that was with Joey I mean, Votto they, having they a lied, great year. Well, they lost like the last 13 games. Thirteen. They lost 14 out of their last 15 games. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I mean, but then again, what By do you the expect? Way, Why would they even try? <laughs> uh, the playoffs start, I think, tomorrow. And Jay Hay. I'm so disinterested in baseball. Like it's gonna be hard to like try to get back into, into it to well, watch it. Well, I got a buddy playing, so. Well, I know, but I'm just saying. Like I just the Reds made me so just ugh, fuck baseball. Well, that's the problem. Like they didn't even like. I don't even feel like they put forth an effort at the end of the year. And the fact that they retained Brian Price is just embarrassing to me. Yeah, it is. They should not have. That dude cannot inspire a fucking. Thing. I like that dude as a pitching coach, but he did not make a good manager. They need to bring like. Barry Larkin or somebody in there, see if he wants to manage. Would you want to manage if you were Barry Larkin in the Reds right now? No, but I mean, you know, I mean, they've got some talent. It's not like they're like. They have no pitchers. They, yeah, they need to do, they need to do something to pick up something pitching wise. They can't, but like, hope Homer, ba- Homer Bailey comes back and saves the. And then it's miraculous, staff. even though he was the fourth best t- pitcher on their team this year. Mm-hmm. That was after they got rid of Johnny Cueto and Mike Leake, who were their two best pitchers. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. I can't. At least they got Dee Sclafani, who showed some promise, for Matt Latos, who was abysmal this year and got cut by the Dodgers. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> he got traded from us to Miami. Miami traded him to L.A., and L.A. was like, see you. See you, dude. Maybe you should come back to Cincinnati and sign a low contract and be a good pitcher here. No, nah, fuck Matt Latos. <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with him. I don't either. Just he's a he bitch. Was, he was a dick when he left. Yeah, he's a bitch. That shit stays in the locker room, motherfucker. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. Anyway is right. Bengals, Bengals, Bengals look good. We'll see what happens. The Bengals do look good, and I'm excited about it. So I hope that that works out. So, listen, we are out of topics for the week. We kind of came together on a short week. We knew that it was going to be kind of a short-ish podcast, so hopefully everybody is okay with a short one. I'm quite sure you are. Oh, yeah. I don't think anyone cares. <laughs> so, uh, really quick, uh, continue to uh, stay tuned for uh, the Let's Plays on Exo Zombies Fight to Round 40. Uh, this was a Let's Play I recorded a while ago with uh, our friends Scott and Damon. And uh, we stay tuned if you can to see if we can make it to Round 40 on the carrier map on Exo Zombies. Yeah, Mon Shumpert had wrist surgery the other day. Yes, I did know that Mon Shumpert. know when he's supposed to come back? Uh, he's going to be out three to four It'll months. in June? Yeah. Okay. He's going to be out three to four months. I gotcha. So the Cavs are not going to be fully healthy till about midway through the year, which is probably okay for me because that will give them enough time to kind of yeah, get their fun. bearings back. They'll be fine. Plus they have that guy, number 23. So He's pretty good. Yeah, he's all right. I think Kevin Love is going to have a big year. 
I think he'll be able to. I mean, he's got a year in. There'll still be some adjusting, sliding in. But I think LeBron's going to give him the ball more because LeBron realizes it's time to start going into Tim Duncan mode and prolong your career. Yeah. Let other people do the work. Start letting Kyrie control the ball more. Kyrie. That's a bad motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's a bad motherfucker. Anyway, stay tuned for Exo Zombies Fight to Round 40 Part 2. We released part one. There's probably going to be... It's a pretty long uh, Let's Play, so there's probably going to be about six or seven parts at least. Looks like it. So oh, shit. The first one's 27 minutes, and there's going to be five or six parts, six or it seven was, parts. I think it was three hours and 45 minutes. Damn. Okay. So maybe we did make it to round 40. Just stay tuned. Mm. So also, real quick, uh, to answer a, uh, a comment... Uh, on the last podcast, we actually had a comment on the podcast. That's probably one of the first times that's ever happened before. Oh. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> this is this guy's uh, take on the Jon Snow a, thing. I say, is it a good? Oh, okay. So it's a comment from somebody else. Yeah. So uh, he said, Snow comes back via sacrifice, Thorn, or better yet, Ollie. Yeah, fucking Ollie. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck Ollie. For real, though. Yeah. Ollie's a bitch. Ollie's the one that fucked him over. Jon Snow is absolutely a Targaryen. He believes Jon Snow is absolutely a Targaryen, and he says Sansa will be queen of Winterfell, and we will see Ned fight in a flashback against Sir Arthur Dane. That would be fucking badass, because I would love to see Ned fight in a battle. Yeah, because I would like to see him fight more than fucking the little bit he fought against Jamie Jamie Lannister Lannister in the first season. But, um... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying he's not a Targaryen. No, we don't know. Yeah, maybe we don't know. Not. Who knows? Yep. I don't know. I mean, I just don't. The whole maybe him coming back through sacrifice thing is fine, but the whole him coming back from his funeral pyre thing that just that's just dumb to me. Well, it doesn't make any sense because he's he's dead. Yeah, because Daenerys right? never did that. Right. People seem to think she did that. She never died. Yeah. So anyway. Right. The fire didn't give her life. You have a dragon's life. Mm-hmm. That it did. And then uh, Luis Ortiz says, Nina should have been number one on the top ten Jack Bowers. Um, yeah, I guess I could understand that, but I honestly felt like the moment wasn't as big as it could have been in the show. But it was still there. It was still in the top ten, man. I understand why but that's a good that one. because... That was a that was a well earned one. Relationship wise, it was probably like number one. Right. Plus, I mean, it him. it took so. it took a good two and a half seasons to get there. Yeah. So. So I mean, I, I understand why you'd say that. Yep, it's I get arguable. it. Any of those could be moved around depending on who. Yeah. Who's yeah. listed as for yeah. sure. And that's why I love top ten lists, and we're gonna begin to do more and more of them, um, because there's just so much good conversation that can come from it. Um, thank you for your uh, supporting my true blood and not calling me a faggot, uh, Sam Fisher, the Sandman 1052. Appreciate it. Unlike the last person who did. Yeah, yeah. Just goes to show you, I know who views YouTube, not people that have seen The Lost Boys. Well, most people. Except for that other guy. Yeah, apparently. Jesus. I mean, I didn't think it would be that serious, but okay. <laughs> Anyways, I believe that uh, I believe that's all that we've got for today. Thank you for checking out ex- episode 83 of the Super Wheeler Rose podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jake Wheeler. <laughs> and I'm Mike Wheeler. Have a super week. <laughs>